Okay, uh, today is our first examination of volume. Okay, so up until this time we've done area, uh, but right now we want to examine volume. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a curve, say f of x, and we're going to bound it from a to b. We did one problem from the notes, and then uh, we gave you a second assignment. Okay. And what we would like to do with that area that you see right there is we would like to revolve it around the x-axis. I want to apologize ahead of time for my uh, lack of ability to draw this well, and I, but I, I need to impress upon you guys that you need to come to grips with what this looked like. And some of you are more gifted in terms of your spatial reasoning than others. And here's generally where it stands out. So I'll show you what we're going to do is, uh, uh, if you, if you kind of think, if I take that same shape and I revolve it around the x-axis, um, what's going to happen is you're going to kind of get a shape like that going. So you kind of see like, uh, say, yeah, say like the, the end of a trombone, but it's not hollow, okay? This would, this would be solid. You see it? So we, we took... Sure, yep, yep. Like the, the like a megaphone from a record player or something like that. Yep, exactly. Okay, so you see it now? Around, it's not hollow because we're taking the area of what we first thought we're, we're revolving that entire thing around. Now, what you have to think now, I, I know the two dimensional piece is hard, but suppose so suppose that this was, a, suppose we were going to slice it, okay? We we're going to just slice off the end and we get, what shape would we get if we just sliced off the end? We get circles, right? I mean, if, if you just sliced off end after end after end after end, you get you get circles, right? And so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to draw a slice. And it starts with a vertical rectangle as though we were finding area. And then we're going to revolve that thing around. As we revolve that around, you can see that represents one of the slices. You guys see that? And so I'm going to examine the slice right over here. What do you think is the thickness of the slice? Do you think it has horizontal thickness or vertical thickness? It does have horizontal thickness, so we call it dx. And the big question we want to answer is how do we find the volume of that disk? It's, it's like a quarter. Say you wanted to find the volume of a quarter. Where would you even start? Okay, all right. How about this? Would we not take pi r squared times the width? And that's what we'll pick up when you get back, okay? Here we go. So picture this is a quarter, a quarter that I, I took out of my pocket, okay? It's got a thickness of dx. If you wanted to be able to find the volume of the shape, you would find the area of the face of it, which would be pi r squared, and then you would multiply that by the width, which is dx. Question. It, you got to think about the thickness of the shape that you kind of cut. So look at this uh, rectangle right there. Does it have horizontal thickness or vertical thickness? Horizontal, so therefore dx. All right, now the question is, what determines the radius in this problem? The height of the function. So then all of a sudden, it becomes pi times your function squared dx. Excellent. So where do we start? We start at A and we go to B. We don't want just one of these slices. We want an infinite number. So therefore, the volume becomes, in this situation, the integral A to B, pi times your function squared dx. So it's a really cool thing in, in a calculus that if we can find 
if we can find the area or the volume of one shape, then we simply just clap on the integral to do an infinite number of them. So we're just choosing the disk because that's what happens when we slice it. So if you could come up with another shape, then that's fine too. So uh, here we go. Find the volume of the area bounded between y equals the square root of x, x equals 4, and x equals 0. Well, x equals 4 is a vertical line, so is x equals 0. And then the square root of x is a function that, that looks like this, correct? So I've got, so I'm going to bound that at x equals 4 and at x equals 0. So everybody see the shaded region I'm working with? So if I were to, to flip this around the x-axis, if I were to flip it around the x-axis, I, I might get a shape that looks something like this. And I'm going to draw a slice right at the end, okay? Does it have horizontal thickness or vertical thickness? Horizontal, so we're going to call it dx. And you can see that if you... So there would be a slice right at the end. So if you were to describe the shape, it's something you would see maybe in real life, how would you describe it? Okay, uh, a bullet? Okay, an acorn, maybe like half of a football. Okay, a curved cone. All right. What did he say? Okay, we'll pretend like. Oh, got it. Yep, there you go. Yep. Thank you for sharing. All right, so we look at that slice. We'll call it dx. Okay, what is the radius here? Square root of x. So the volume of that disk is going to be pi times r squared dx. We don't want just the volume of one of those shapes. We want how many? An infinite number. So we just do the integral. Pi. Uh, the square root of x squared is x dx. And now I need my integral, or my bounds. Square root of 4. What is the antiderivative of x? Times pi, evaluated. Don't have to plug in the 0 because it's 0. Plug in 4 and I get... That was pretty easy, huh? A lot of people ask, Mr. Gens, what, what kind of work do I have to show on the test? All this work is communicating to me your approach because we're going to switch from dx to dy at some point. Uh, we're going to switch shapes from, from uh, disks to washers to cylindrical shells to all sorts of stuff. So um, this work is all important. You're trying to communicate to me what you're doing. So, yeah, I would, I would love to see this when you go about your work. Okay, uh, for the sake of time, uh, we're going to skip problem two. We're going to go problem three right now. Problem two really isn't that important. It says finding the volume of the area bounded between y equals one half x plus one and x equals zero. I switched the problem from your notes. It should be y equals three, y equals three. And we're going to rotate it around the y axis. So you can see how I've, I've changed the problem a little bit. We'll talk about that. Dana, what happened to Gina? Okay, hope she gets it. All right. I'm going to look at 1 half x plus 1. Something like that. I'm going to bound it at x equals 0. What is x equals 0? What is the, what kind of line is that? Yeah. 
vertical line is just the y-axis, right? So I'm going to bound it by the y-axis, that line, and then y equals 3. What's y equals 3? Yeah. So do you see the area that's bounded? And I'm going to rotate it about the y-axis. So I'm going to rotate it like this. So you got to think about, you know, kind of what it would look like then as you as you wrap that around. Sure. There you go. Yep. Kind of see that. So if you were to, if you were to, you, you want to think about slicing this. I, I, it's so important that you think about this process. If I were to slice it like this, would I come up with the same shapes every time? No. If I were to slice it like this, would I come up with the same shapes every time? Yeah. What shapes would you get? Yeah, you get circles that would have an infinitely small thickness, right? So that's why we want to slice it like this. So as I draw out my shape here, you know, that's my shape that I'm slicing. Does this have vertical thickness or horizontal thickness? So what is vertical thickness? Dy. This is extremely important. Okay, this is what people miss on the test. They, you know, they they always just get used to x or whatever. You've now communicated to me that you are doing vertical thickness, which means because it's dy, everything must be of a variable y now. So now this has a variable of x, doesn't it? So change it to y. So I have a y minus 1 is equal to 1 half x. Now what? So 2y minus 2 is equal to x. So we know that this line right here, we, we're going to express that as 2y minus 2. So some of you, uh, you know, as you try to kind of think about, um, you know, does this really work? Um, you know, how does it all work out? Uh, I'm just going to kind of show you a way to check your work a little bit here. Um, this has a y coordinate of 3. Everybody agree? Everybody agree it's y value 3 there? All right. So um, what's the x value? Not a 4. If I, or yeah, yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, so, yep. so how do you get 4, Andrew? Yep, plug in 3, subtract the 1 to get 2, and then multiply by 2 to get 4. Very good. So can somebody tell me uh, at this spot right here, what is what is this distance then? It, it is four. Okay. Well, if you plugged in three for y, you came up with four. Two times three is six minus two is four. So this does in fact provide that distance. So the radius is two y minus two. So every once in a while, I like to just uh, make up some points and see if it works out. Okay. So what is then the volume of that of that kind of disk? Pi times 2y minus 2 squared dy. Good. Yeah, so I mean that's that's really the new part of what we've been working on. Now is the easy part where we say we don't want one of them, we want an infinite number of them. So sounds difficult, but we just do integral. 2y minus 2, y squared, dy, and I need my bounds. Very good. 1 to 3. Why, Kelvin? You don't start until 1. Or if you think about just slicing it, you would, you know, you'd slice up here at 3 and you'd slice all the way down until you got to 1, and then you'd run out, wouldn't you? So that's why I go one to three. 
No, you would not. Zero would be interesting because zero would start creating this extra region down here. We wouldn't want that. All right. Well, fortunately, we're really good at that, aren't we? Four y squared minus eight y plus four dy. Not factor, but multiply, right? Uh, the antiderivative of 4y squared. Minus 4y squared. Oh, I got the 1 there, so I, I, you know, I don't have 0, so that's kind of frustrating, but that's the way it is. I plug in 3. 27 times 4. Well, actually, 27 divided by 3 is just 9, right? Times 4. We have 5 times 36 minus, you know, I plug in 3 here. 3 squared is 9 times 4 is, oh, isn't that convenient? Plus 12. Sometimes I feel like math problems have personalities. Like this one's a very easygoing personality. Plug in one, we get four thirds. Uh, then we get a minus four and plus four. So once again, it's a very convenient problem. You see that the things just kind of go away. Thirty sixes go away, fours go away. I have pi times twelve minus four thirds. Twelve is thirty six thirds minus four thirds would be thirty two pi over 3. And there you have it. It's pretty cool. Let's do one more. There it is. I got it back. Woo! First time ever. Here we go. Sorry, YouTube just followed the lead of the recording. Here we go. Find the volume of the area bounded between curves y equals negative x squared plus 3x x equals 0, x equals 3, rotate around the x axis. What the heck does this look like? Parabola, upside down. Uh, if you think more about the parabola, and I, I've had a lot of people say, Mr. Gitz, I don't know what that parabola looks like. You, you can find the x intercepts, you can find the vertex, all sorts of stuff, but where's across the x axis? Zero and three, and I know that that happens quicker for some of you than others. I, I'm sorry, but um, you know if I know it goes to zero and three, that's that's really enough. And then I, I'm going to rotate this like so. And so, would you draw a vertical rectangle to find that area, or horizontal? A vertical rectangle. Very good. So we got these vertical rectangles going on here, and when we rotate them around we get that kind of disc shape. Is this a horizontal width or vertical width? Horizontal width, vertical rectangle. So that's what we've got. We've got these uh, disc shapes, width of dx. What's the radius? Yep, negative x squared plus 3x. Very good. Leah? Uh, nobody believes that you don't understand it because you end up getting it anyway. All right, so I'm going to square the radius. Uh, pi r squared dx. Um, because, is my, so my variable is x. So what are the x values that I'm integrating between them? 0 to 3. Those are my bounds of integration. 0 to 3. Pi. Let's see, square negative x squared, and I get x to the fourth. Very good. My 6x to the third. Sine x squared, you are a genius. dx. Antiderivative. 
exit fifth over five. Okay, execute. Good work, everybody. Um, uh, what? Good execute. Thank you. All right. <laughs> All right. So uh, we can see that uh, we plug in the zero. We're going to get zero, right? So we just got to worry about the three. And uh, I'm going to try to make quick work of this. The common denominator will end up being 10, right? Okay. So uh, three to the fifth. 243 over 5, so it would be yeah, 486 over 10. Minus uh, 3 to the 4th is 81 times 3 is 243 over 2. We had to take 243 times 5, right? So 250 times 5 is 1,250. We're going to subtract 35 off of that, so 1,215. Good. You guys are very good with your arithmetic. Good job. Uh, 3 to the 3rd is 27 times 2 is 81, and then over 10, so 810, huh? And so uh, I'll kind of write this out. 486 and 810, that makes 1296 for a minus 1215. So it's like I get 81, so 81 pi over 10. So a unique answer in all of its glory and beauty. Kind of neat to look at. So that's volume by disks, both dx and dy. I have a short assignment for you. And uh, again, the next two days, you're going to have time to work to prepare for your final exam. Uh, you want to own this final exam, folks, because uh, you're going to see it as we continue to move on. So substitution is pretty key.